Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. Welcome back to the rundown. We had a bit of a little bit of a hiatus last week. Not necessarily, not necessarily because there was anything like actually important, but like Elden Ring's Shadow of the Earth Tree came out, and I told Brian straight up, "We're not having an episode this week." It comes out the same day we're supposed to record. I'm sorry, like, like that, like, like. It was one, it wasn't the only, it wasn't the biggest, but it was certainly a reason I didn't fucking kill myself back in November. So, <laughs> here, so definitely important enough to, to uh, do that, so, yeah. And Evan is allowing me now to take off the week of October 11th, so I may play Sparkman Zero. So it's all even in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, one, maybe two games a year where we're just gonna veg out. Like, 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 you're that's that's the ball again. I, like, I think, I think that taking time off for a video game release you're super excited about is a completely valid thing. I'd be doing it with work if Christmas wasn't so close. The fuck you mean if Christmas wasn't so close? I'm saying in October, not oh. for now. Yeah, if my thing was coming out now, I would have definitely asked off. I would have been like, yo, bro, I'm going on vacation in, like, Hawaii for a week, so can I get off, please? Spartan Zero, is that a Halo game? No, that's the uh, Dragon Ball Z game. Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, fair but enough. listen, I've been watching Budokai Tenkaichi 2 videos. I'm getting I, so I play, hyped. I, I, play, I play Budokai Tenkaichi uh, uh, either two or three. Whichever one of the one of the ones that was on the PS2. Back this in the is number day. four. This is number four. Are this is the fourth. Are you hype? Are you crazy? Yes, yeah. I'm fucking hype. <laughs> I'm so hype. Oh my god. And then uh, I know I talked about this last week. Just let me fucking yeah, or two weeks ago. Just let me go for let it. Me go for it. Go for it. Uh, this is they are space. doing. They are doing what if scenarios that are player fully designed and they give you access to like cutscenes and dialogue options and everything like that. And then you could upload it online and play people's fucking what if scenarios in the Dragon Ball universe, which is pretty much like Xenoverse, but it was always just released as DLC straight from Bandai Namco. And now we actually get to create it. So I love that. That's fucking hype. Yeah, that, also, I, that before it's go ahead. No, I was, no, finish the point. I was I was just gonna say that like that kind of gets into like uh, one of the things I heard heard this week um, with um, uh, a lot of companies now looking at like YouTube as their like streaming companies looking at YouTube as their biggest competitor, and and Disney Plus was looking at making at, at uh, doing user generated content. Ah, uh, that'd be and wild. So, and so it's like there's a, a big push right now for companies to uh, do make to uh, a lot do bring in user-generated content in some capacity as a kind of way to, uh, you know, not have to develop any premium content, but continue. I'm not saying that's what Great, they're man. doing. I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but even so, continue. As you I got you. Uh, I was going to ask, what console, first and foremost, is Space Marine 2 going to be cross-play? Because if it is, I'm getting it on PS5 and we're playing. If it isn't, then I'm getting it on PSC, PC and we're playing. Uh, that's a good question. Let me ask. It it is not going to be. It is not confirmed to crossplay. Uh oh. Ah well. All you all you got all you're gonna have to do is just load up. To, uh, like plug in a controller and load it up. Yeah, I know. No problem. It'll be okay. But yeah, those are the two big releases that I'm at least counting on by the end of the year that I'm hype about. Kitten. Yeah. I'm like I, you will accept the love of from me, whether you want it or. Evan, just a quick question for me: If it's too hard for the recording, don't worry about it. But is there a way I could just see you and not see me? Oh yeah, no, I can. That's I, I can sort that out for me. Fine, and dandy. Oh, get me wrong. I like looking at myself. I'm a little narcissistic, but I like okay. looking at you more. There you go. <laughs> Better. Boom. Much better. Thank you. I wanted to see the kitten more. <laughs> yeah, he's a little... This is Momo. He's a little... And I mean, nice. to all the fans, I don't know if anybody is watching live right now, but thank you so much for supporting us and not watching two geriatrics yell at each other. Because that's <laughs> going on right now. Yeah, no, nah, that's... Um, um, <laughs> that's... that's. I'm doing that tomorrow. I'm going to be doing... 
I'm going to be uh, uh, reacting to that. Uh, I'm just going to grab the VOD. Or fuck it, I might end up doing it tonight after we're done recording. I mean, just... I won't lie, if you if you want to, I'd be down to jump on it with you. If you don't, no. 100%, problem. but I do not want this rundown to be just that. And I'm being no, honest. no, no, no. This like, is definitely something separate. Like, <laughs> like, like, the, like, if we do that, which we're probably going to end up doing, ladies and gentlemen, in hindsight, um, like, we're going to record this, we're going to have, like, a 15, 20 minute, like, go eat something and drink, piss, shit, all of that. I'm going to go yep. eat something real quick because I know that this next two and a half hours of my life of, is going to be a more, is going to be the uh, Kendrick Drake Beef Special 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> All over again. And yeah. hey, I gotta say, I am enjoying uh, doing these dual streams with like an event going on. Because even two weeks ago with Summer Game Fest and all that shit, that was fun too. So I'm definitely enjoying this. For sure. But we don't want the rundowns just to be like a React podcast all of themselves. Definitely but, not. But uh, if, if I, let me just pull up the HI Media TV up, news update, the uh, um, podcast I do for Promote news. Yo, shit. Yep. Uh, this actually, that's more of a political nature. Let's pull up nerd news. I think nerd news would be a much more apt thing to pull topics from today because there's been a couple things. Um, well, but- first thing I want to uh, discuss prior to any possible topic pulls. Are right. you aware of this Dr. Disrespect situation? Yes. Let us talk about it because because here's the thing, right? Uh, uh, like, I've never liked Dr. Disrespect. I never consumed his content. I consu- I consumed a little bit of his content and I just, he was not, I was not a fan. He always gave me kind of a pedo not, vibe. <laughs> not, not a pedo vibe. He did get, but, but something pedo adjacent he did give me like as like crypto right crypto fash type of vibe you know you know what i mean like he's like the type and of person like he's the type I of will... person who if he wasn't a live streamer he would, and he just had a normal job he'd be in one of those right wing facebook groups promoting like april bullshit like one of those types of See, things you know what i mean i think his person is like public persona is that and i think that's probably what drove both of us away because i definitely yeah. agree i just don't know enough about the personal man to say definitively yes if you know it all good then yes sure but this shit is pissing me off so much mm-hmm. because for four, four years for four fucking years and not anybody in the media's fault or even people working for Twitch, they were concerned about being sued. But for four years, everybody was holding on to the secret that this motherfucker, and excuse my language, I know we're less than 10 minutes in, but that this person, this streamer, was, I don't even want to go as far as to say victimizing minors, but what seemed to be the start of victimizing, victimizing a minor through a very secret channel on twitch that is no longer available thank christ uh you mean whispers yeah is whispers still available yeah oh Dog, i get i got people i get people whispering me all the fucking like random i'm like i don't fucking care like it's it, it is a tab up in the header of twitch that i just don't fucking look at because well i don't know nothing. too much about twitch so i that, take it back about that, the whisper that, thing that, that's fine continue and, and here's here's the other thing and i thought about this too so I heard like I, I don't I don't necessarily put a lot any real fault at Twitch for like keeping it under wraps because anytime that there that you're putting that hey so and so did th- like this to a minor launching like in the ma- into the into the into the zeitgeist people like like it, putting out like a, a minor like issues with a minor for the minor's sake can be a little leery unless like they or their um guardian like okay that that is kind of rough the second point i yeah. want to make the big is just really quickly just to comment on that that's yeah. why i don't place any blame on twitch either i understand their position Go this ahead. is i'm a tier one uh twitch.tv slash amazon hater but i but credit where credit's due they ain't at fault this time the only person at fault is dr disrespect for playing stupid and saying in like 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 saying like for that, four years for four years and here's the thing right here's my thing um and here and, and this is to everybody who's like in the, with the controversy talking about like 
oh, he did X, Y, and Z. Like he like 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 how old was she? Like like who like like all of, like asking all of these clarifying questions and for like in trying to like play do damage control all that shit. And I'm like, he, a married man with children. Was drive coordinating with an underage person to meet at TwitchCon. It should be cut, simple, dry as that. Exactly. Now, this minor, like, like this, there was obviously flirting and shit going on. Like, obviously, it wouldn't self admitted. Have been That's the part that I'm also getting fucking mad at. Uh, this is just the aspect that I didn't get to comment on. It's yeah, also I'm so genuinely. Uh, so aggravated at the fact that these people who had the balls to actually come out and say what the fuck was going on are now getting backlash and are now being called out for no reason because people are supporting a possible pedophile or whatever it is. And I'm like, is the brain rot of online persona, persona so so genuinely uh, uh, infected in the minds of people? I will, I gotta make the argument, this is young people, or at least people under the age of 30, who are doing this shit. So, I don't know what the fuck to do. Because I'm like, God forbid anybody who comes out on the internet ends up being a uh, pedophile, whatever the case, uh, child abuser, whatever you want to say. How do we find out? Because if they are in a situation where they are extremely so happy... No company nor media presence is going to do the due diligence of getting this information out to the public until finally the person admits to their wrongdoing. Yeah. And that's a gross implication. Because if Diddy, here's the thing that I don't think people genuinely understand. If Diddy did the shit that he did, but then was also a YouTube streamer or a Twitch streamer, the amount of backlash that these victims would be going through, same thing with somebody like R. Kelly, fucking uh, Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, whatever you want to say. God forbid they aren't, they become Twitch streamers. We have to deal with, you know, people defending them now. What the fuck are we talking about? It's crazy. So here, <laughs> here's a difference, right? Why it's it's like why R. Kelly got off back in 03, like in the early not 03, but like the early 2000s, versus got nailed to the wall in like 20 in the 2020s, um, has more to do, it has like more to do with, um, like, like the brand recognition than anything else. Who was, I hope you're right. Who, who was R. Kelly back in like the early 2000s? The motherfucker that wrote "I Believe I Can Fly." This was this man was like trapped 70, in the closet. <laughs> this man was like 75 percent of all like listenable R and B in the fucking uh, 90s. You know, so so this man was got this was a god. You know, who was Diddy back in the 90s and 2000s? He was on. He was on Big Smalls' shit. He was on everybody's shit. He was a producer. He was being referenced in every song. He had. He was everywhere. What was what was going on in 2020? R. Kelly ain't seen been seen high or low from in years. Releases Diddy, a song says I did it. <laughs> since Diddy comes out, Diddy, what's Diddy up to? He owns, uh, I think, Complex. Maybe. He's not I think doing, he. He's not I think doing. He even had to sell his shares of that. So he's I don't not, even he's think not, he's, anymore. He's not doing the shows. He's not putting out albums. He's not doing anything. He's not connecting with his prior fans. He's just being a mogul. But what I'm saying is, well, 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 no, I think, me, I'm, I'm almost done. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry. One more thing, and then I'm done. I know. I know. I'm rambling. And ultimately, you know, it's it, you know when you when you are not a uh, huge person like like at the forefront in the, that people are aware of or people are or, or, or more importantly people are fans of and are continual fans of and constantly interacting with, there's a reason why Harvey Weinstein got nailed. Because all of the people that accused him, people liked more and knew more of than him. This is the reason why Twitch and YouTube, or Twitch streamers and YouTubers, like, have such fervent defenders. It's because they are, because of the way the algorithms and the way of the nature of how stream works is, you have to constantly, constantly, constantly be putting yourself out there, and there's never any, in any, downtime that has happens like you know like you lose time is money so yeah 
you know, of course, fucking, you know, Diddy is not going to, like, people are not going to fight Diddy on that, except for, like, right-wing manosphere bullshit, you know, trying, like, like just, like, poke that motherfucker, say, the white man's trying to get, put the black man down, that type of shit, you know, it's, which is the only people I've seen defending Diddy at this point, so, you know, that, like, it's, 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 I don't know, man, that. if I, I think what I'm saying is if I had a platform, especially through YouTube or Twitch, I would definitely uh, not open season, meaning physically, but open season in comment sections. If they see a motherfucker supporting this nigga, yo, demolish this kid, please do yourself a favor. Help us. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say, because it yeah. only because I think what I, the uh, outcome I'm trying to avoid is any time that this happens with a YouTube streamer or tweet twitch streamer i just don't want it to be brushed under the rug because of the backlash that they're facing by the way you do actually on, on an unrelated note but related note you do have a platform it's called at no dot to brian on youtube you think i don't know and i got some podcasts in goddamn stockpile that i'm not releasing until i have like four or five because i could already tell this is inconsistent as a mug <laughs> and that's about our both of us Honestly, if I well, my thing is is that ultimately, like, if, if we don't put out a podcast, I still got content coming down my gut bottom up through the pipeline. You know, normally, no, I know that. normally for me, Mondays are when these come out on the channel, and you know, if I had other content to go out on Monday, like normal, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, I I'm I'm waiting for you to get that uh set up and sorted, um, so you so I can start so we can so I can see you start doing some short content and growing your fan your following. Definitely get on that. As you know, my life was turned upside down last week, so. It is. We will talk about that off mic, possibly, later on. But, anyways, um, what else has been going on? Uh, yeah, the presidential debate is tonight. Um, I, uh, Shadow of the Earth. Yeah, Shadow of the Earth has been my entire fucking life. Yeah, that's, I. That's it. That's all I've been doing. I heard that, man. Uh, I've been working and shit. Stuff's been going well, so I'm thankful for that. Good. Night shift kicking your ass? Nah, I'm a night person, so. <laughs> Just geared to what I'm used to, you know? Yeah. Anyways, um, do you know how, so... Just to talk about Elden Ring, because I'm going to talk about Elden Ring. It's all this like my uh -huh. brain. Otherwise, you're going to be the person bringing shit up and all that, because I'm I'm just total Miyazaki built that for us. Um, you know how like yeah, like I love the progression in this DLC, like the adding the uh, uh, Skidoo tree um, fragments. That's why I call them Skibbity tree because like it's just like Skidoo, like Scud. You mm -hmm. tree, come on, yeah, like like that. I don't know if something was lost in translation, like whatever. But okay, um, let's see. I'm trying to trying to bring things up that have happened over the course of the week. I also well, don't like. We got fucking... we got two weeks. We got two. We got two weeks. Remember, because uh, yeah. By the way, all like the reason why Brian is sort of be is do is like doing some like minor like background producing here is because i literally was playing shadow of the earth tree until like 30 seconds before we hit the record button like i i i am a mess i'm a disaster i am incorrigible <laughs> like i yeah i am i i well keep talking keep talking elder ring until i figure something out because i got you but it's just taking some time because all I'll talk about is Budokai Tech Gaichi, if that's if that's what people want to do. But I don't you, want this you, to be you're, a... You're, uh, so, you're so excited for that game, aren't you? Oh, I, but I don't want this to be an hour torture of both of us just talking about our current gaming obsessions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's just it's one of those things where it's like, ooh, we're just going to be autistically info dumping for like an hour and a half. Also, what the hell is wrong with my fucking roommate? Does she not understand what the fuck it means to shut a goddamn door? Look at this. Why is that open? Oh no, the air conditioning. My AC is on. Why? <laughs> Let me get up and close. And that. I'm putting it in the group chat. I'll be right back. I gotta go close this door. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's 
on a one thing. Um. Oh God, I y'all. I just saw. I just peeped something. Brian's going to peep this shit on this. Hold on. So, uh, Brian, Brian, I can't hear you. What? Eddie Murphy reveals huge progress in multiple Shrek movies. Uh oh. Ah. Uh, excuse me. God damn. Came out of nowhere. Uh. Yeah, I think miss me on this. Gonna be so honest. I completely agree. I think I think one classic, two better than the first, three. Honestly, I think it was really fucking solid. It would have been a great place to end the fucking series. No, yeah, without a doubt. Four was uh, did four come out yet, or is that the one that they were waiting for? Four, four was timey wimey time travel bullshit. Yeah, it should have just stayed with three. It was really good with the triplets. It was a nice send off. Like, hey, everybody has their happy ever after. Like, Boom. just just rate like just regulate it to like Disney shorts and shit. Where, I know, like, but I have the AC on. Fuck off. <laughs> I tell you that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But regardless, um, yeah. No, oh, something uh, something I could actually bring up of fucking value so you and me are not just uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, the boy, not the boys, the bear came out this week. Gotta be honest. Wait, new ep- the new season came out? Don't tell Full me season. shit. Me and, me and Meadow need to watch it. Me- and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spoil right. the first fucking episode because it's not anything. The first episode is a motherfucking montage. And if there's one thing good about the bear, it's their dialogue and the increased feeling of anxiety, everything happening at once, especially in the kitchen scenes. That's what you watch the fucking show for. When you have such a strong dialogue team a right. year after the fucking uh, strike of all writers and actors, you don't take... 40 minutes to show everybody what New York looks like in a fucking uh, 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 convoluted, non-linear time uh, montage. That's the only way I could say it. Because I'm seeing articles now about how people are in love with this fucking episode. And for 40 minutes, I was screaming at the fucking screen because I didn't want to listen to the same goddamn song over and over again. Second episode is very good. They come right back to where they're supposed to be and it's perfect. Perfectly executed. So I'm not saying don't watch it. Maybe just skip the first episode because there's not even a fucking line of dialogue that lends any information that is valuable everything that is discussed in the first episode of the season has been discussed since the first episode of the first season skip it if you can that's all i will i I'll, i'm probably gonna watch it just because um it's probably gonna do one of those artsy fartsy things where they like park it back to it and it all makes sense why all that shit's happening the way it was so i'm gonna watch it just for safety's sake i hope so because uh I was really upset about that first episode because, again, I love the, uh, I love the essence of what the bear is. It's my family personified in a fucking show, and I love it. And that goddamn dinner scene is just me and my grandparents. I like, know when it, I was watching just that, me and my grandparents. When, when me and Meadow <laughs> watched that episode together, I said, "This reminds me of Brian's family." We were just we were sitting in Chicago. <laughs> I heard Chicago in her at a Chicago apartment at the time <laughs> watching it, and I'm like, "This is it, like this reminds me of Brian's family." She's like, "How so?" Because this was before Christmas, but mind you, like, when, oh, okay. like when like I like had had Meadow on the phone with me, and like she heard the fucking fighting in the background at your house and shit. She's like, "Uh." Because, I mean, also, you got Jamie Lee Curtis. You got, uh, what's his name? Uh, Better Call Saul. Fuck. Uh, Bob Odenkirk as, yep. like, the matriarch and the patriarch. Then you got fucking John Mulaney and John Berthal. And, <laughs> like, how could you not love that scene? That scene is so perfect. And encapsulates dysfunctional, loud families perfectly. That's why I love this show as much as I do. Yeah. So... But yeah, that's um, that is. But very good so far. I've only seen the first two episodes, so I don't even have spoilers really to give you. But I wouldn't go into it anyway. I want people to watch it. Very great show. Uh, speaking of shows, let me just say, 
This week in fucking history, we eating good, boy. We eating good. We got the boys. We got the bear. We got uh, my hero. We got kaiju number eight finale and the demon slayer finale this week. I mean, I'm hyped. This is a great you. Week you being a TV watcher, you must be eating. Oh, eating good, baby. Eating good. And I know you're not a big fan of him, but I just found this really funny. I think the interview is on YouTube somewhere. Do you know who Jiminy Glick is? Never it's Martin Short. Life. It's Martin Short in like a uh, fat bodysuit. He does really funny interviews. He roasts the fuck out of his guests. Bill Maher, because he released his book, had Jiminy Glick on his show. And for 10 or 15 minutes straight, he's just being roasted. And it's the greatest thing ever. I think it's the only thing I will ever suggest to you to watch from the Bill Maher show if you want to. Because oh, he gets make roasted. Make no mistake. <laughs> it's like with when Andrew Schultz went on there and like... Like, I heard about this. I didn't see the clip, but it's like when Andrew Schultz went on and, and had to explain to uh, uh, Belmar how to make an edgy joke, like, and not be racist. Yep. <laughs> yep. And like, I mean, he just had Charlemagne the God, the God on, and Charlemagne was like, yo, for real, you're doing more bad than good every time you say that college students are supporting Hamas. Like, you're an idiot for saying that. It's a total mischaracterization. So, it's crazy. I definitely agree with you. Who the fuck is Bill Maher's audience at this point? It has to be moderates who are gung-ho about Israel, who are, uh, what's it called, fucking in love with Republican uh, social issues. Because genuinely, outside of that, I don't know who the show is for. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it not to, for... It used to be for liberals. It used to be for like liberal people. I know, me and my grandmother back in the early 2000s, used, I used to stay up to three in the fucking morning watching that shit on HBO. Trust me, I know, that shit used to be for real fucking liberals. And then, I don't know if it was Trump, I don't know if it was during the Obama era, but something fucking changed with the man. And he slowly but surely started going right, but also not right, because now right is the Trump brain rot and even he's against that and i'm like then who are you for <laughs> no no so here's the thing like let's uh like let me fucking you know be an extra real quick all right so let, let's let's uh pull something up briefly real quick just so i can explain where bill maher how it is he is right wing he is a right winger so let me um so let me explain how th like there there's like let's look at this all right so here's a line right this is the line here, and that's what thing. This, these, uh, is your, uh, this, this is your right wing. This is, this is the far right. This is the far left. The words for these are reactionary and revolutionary. Okay. React, revolutionary people want to take a system, and this is just a quick poli side one on one bullshit. So bear with me. This is more for the viewers than for you. Um, it is uh, revolutionary people want to completely uh, re dismantle and rebuild a system from the ground up. From the ground up, they are. It is revolutionary action. It is like like take, that. That is what that that is. Those are revolutionaries. Reactionaries are people who want to either who are so steadfast in, cons in in conserving and maintaining the status quo or regressing to a prior idea that of what they think the past was what was better will do will do the same vi violent and oppressive actions uh, as revolutionaries will but instead of dismantling the system it'll be to either keep it ex exactly it'll be it'll be it's usually to regress it backwards so revolutionary it's it's about dismantling the current system to move forward reactionary is about dismantling the current system to move backward that is why generally revolutionary action is looked upon favorably revolutionary actions are people like the the french the, uh, the french revolution uh the american revolution um you know, the, the, the Arab Spring, things of that nature. That is all revolution action. That is generally looked at as good. There is a bad old form of like government or status quo that is not good for people. They want to break it down and try something. That's why it's generally looked fondly. Extreme reactionaries are people that want to uh, either 
conserve, amend, or regress the current status quo. These are your, um, the, these are like your authority. These are your like heavily of, uh, these are like authoritarianism can exist uh, in both. Uh, like if authoritarianism cannot exist in truly revolutionary action at a certain at certain points due to the fact that uh, being on the left side of the spectrum, it the le point the further left you get, the more you prioritize uh, freedom, well being of community, collectivism, and things of that nature. So that doesn't really lend well to authoritarianism. So that's why when you have places like the USSR, the DPRK, uh, North Korea, or any other self described communist country or whatever they're they're usually when when if you remove the fact that they call themselves communists they're functionally just authoritarian dictatorships that's why what that's why some people might say that there has never been a real communist thing because most of them don't exist like have never existed in the way like the books say so that's the far right that's the far left your far right are your people like are your are you, like your american revolutionaries your french revolutionaries the, re the reactionaries are people like the Nazis uh, and um, things of that nature. Your camp or your campus, like your people who are like who are like authoritarian, with, like authoritarian aspirations, but they cloak it in a veneer of like left wing ideology. That looks like that. Then you have here's the center. This is, these are your moderates. These are these are the people. These are these are you know people who are like you know can pick a side. These people do not exist. They say they do, they actually don't. Here, you have your, uh, you, here you have your liberals, here you have your conservatives. Your liberals are the people who, like, liberals and conservatives have more in common than, li li liber a liberal has more in common with a conservative than they do a radical. Radical radicals are your progressives. These are, you know, it, 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 to put it in America's context, these are people who want, you know, universal health care, higher minimum wage, uh, strong unions, things of that nature. These are, these are uh, like, like, these are um, like things like decommodifies housing, things that are objectively good things for people broadly in community broadly, but is bad for the status quo. And, I think I have every right to say this. I didn't consent to a full poli sci course based off of Bill Maher. Is that is that reasonable? <laughs> yeah, yes, but I don't respect consent for the next ten minutes. So you're stuck with the shit. Uh, mm. Versus conser versus conservatives. Right. Versus conservatives yeah. who uh, don't who have who, but but this is but versus conservatives who who in theory shouldn't have much in common with ultra conservatives so bump um give me give me five minutes i'm almost done the point the point i'm making is is that uh in, in america most people are here most people by and large are about from here to here your liberals are people who support um, social social justice and like they nominally are for like more like stronger like money being used for people, social welfare programs of that nature. By and large, for a lot of America's history, of America, most of America was here. Do you have th these? This like this? Most Democrats are, you know. On, especially on economic issues, are here. You know, this shifts a little bit more probably to like here when you start talking about things like abortion, gay rights, and black people being considered human beings, shit like that. Like, you know, more like, like, especially in today's day and age, people are more receptive to, you know, not treating gay people like degenerate, like, like, like sexual degenerates. So, why, why, why do I uh, point, point that out? Because Bill Maher nominally even when he was on the air back then he was here this location here this is where the lion's share of people who identify as democrats centrist democrat like normal most like normal democrats and have money 
Most people who have money and are Democrats are here. They don't hate black people. They just don't want them around. And they don't want they don't want black people to be treated like shit, but they just don't want them in their areas. And they also don't want to change to have higher taxes to pay for social programs for the poor. But very quickly, also, let's qualify that point during the early 2000s. That point is support of the Afghan and Iraq war. That point is against gay marriage currently in terms of that history. And uh, what's it called? It was also a time in which Democrats were pretty uh, cons more conservative about social programs than they are now. That's because in, in that in particular is because of Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, so, Bill Clinton, Bill, like Democrats for well, since since FDR were like here. That's why you saw the meat packing industry getting better. A lot of yep. social programs, social security. It was 90, constantly moving 90, to the right. 90 percent, 90 percent um, uh, corporate tax, which made it so companies would invest in pensions or uh, work, uh, work wages and all that shit. R&D. It's the, the, the tax policy that FDR instituted led to the longest lark to the to the most prosperous continuous period economic period in American history and once um and, and that was only stopped and that was only and that was only stopped in large part due to um, OPEC and um and uh, the gas shortages that played part of the administration um so because of Bill Clinton got us here. And this is where both, like, this, this is where you get your Nancy Pelosi's, your smug, I know better than you because I'm, 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 I, I don't, I think black people are humans and gay people deserve rights, but also you're, but, but just don't be poor. Like that type of, those types of people. Um, and the, the thing is, is, is that everything I'm talking about here is the, is the typical a political understanding of things. Or this is like the like the American political. If you want to hear to hear something fucking wild, Brian, take a look at this. Mm. You're gonna if you want if you if you consider what international like the political compass is, America, all of these points get shipped to the right. We have no revolutionaries. These don't exist in America. Yeah, by some. But they're not like a constituency that's cared about. In reality, in America, these people are 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 listened to heavily. But because everything shifts this way, these people don't get heard ever. These people are heard less than they would have been otherwise. These would have been your normal, like in like place like Germany. These people here like the radicals would have been considered like your far left your far left basically you're like your super you're like your like your normal left basically the liberals are 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 the liberals here are basically you know if wanting universal like wanting uh you know higher wages you know social protections for minorities and shit these people are uh, these people are your normal, considered your normal left. These people are your fringe. These people are your left. So the people that want universal health care and decommodified housing and stuff like that, things that are uh, points of view that are very well represented in other countries are considered the fringe. Mm. The liberal people, these are your left. Your moderates become your liberals and your conservatives become your moderates. So there's a reason why whenever somebody says they're a moderate and identifies as a moderate, I hear you're a conservative. Un unless you we get into detail about what you actually fucking believe, you're just a conservative because that is what you just end up. You just end up doing exactly what Republicans, uh, what's it called, accuse. Uh, I'm sorry. You just ended up doing exactly what Democrats accuse Republicans of doing, though, because I'm like, you gotta, you gotta understand that anybody affiliated with a party and inside of that party, inside of that group, is probably just going to, uh, 
what's it called? Strengthen the arguments of other people in that group. I believe strongly in the individual and having individual conversation. You know I do. Yeah. And I strongly believe that moderate being a moderate is a thing in this country, especially nowadays. I'm not talking as, about parties, on. to be clear. I'm talking no, 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 about I, political political like where you lean politically. No, no, I know. And what I'm saying is, I think as we continue to keep going both ways, as the party themselves continue to go both ways, politically, we are constantly being pulled both directions. And we are constantly asking ourselves, are we a good example of this? Are we a good example of that? And I'm saying, I genuinely don't believe in this uh, uh not the political idealism you're talking about, but the p political idealism of political parties and staying affiliated with them and then broad stroking another side of it, especially when people are claiming that they are themselves are not a part of that side. You get what I'm saying? So I want to be very, I get what you're saying, and I want to be very clear when I say this. And I'm not talking about moderates they're, that they're, use they're that in, as, a, they're, as a, go ahead. Let's be very clear when, like, I, so... The idea of like being pulled to both sides are, are extreme. Let's remember what I just said of what at that political comments. What are the people on the left asking for? Like the people that are considered remember, the revolutionary people, the ones that want to like overthrow everything, they're not even considered. They don't exist. Yeah, we're not even talking about that. No, we're talking about the people that want a universal health care or at the very least a public option. A the government having a much higher percentage of control over the housing market, like maybe putting housing and urban development into landlording and making it so, uh, you know, if you need a house, you can just go make an application and get in there rather than the convoluted system that we currently have of paying landlords whatever the fuck they ask for to use the, their housing for Section 8. Um, we, you have people that want a strong labor rights, strong labor movement. And, and organized labor, you have people they, like the, this. These are things that ostensibly remember that the, what the what the radical section of of the of the political spectrum wants is uh, a h is not dismantling of the system, but changing it enough to make things better for the for the collective for for the community for everyone. That like, like these are not things that are you know that's that are not there. These are not end goals that are harmful and lead people to be in worse places than they otherwise would have been. Like it means more people are fed, more people are healthy, more. What is the so right way? What is the right way? Before? Way more people in this country have contradicting views when you go from political issue to political issue than they are fully Republican or fully Democrat or yeah. fully liberal. Or I, fully I know uh, that's not that's not what issue. I that's not what I'm saying here. Oh, look, a uh, damn. So I'm banning the word Democrat Republican. This, no, I just hold on. I just state. changed it from liberal to conservative. That's what I just said. Yeah. People can have a mix of liberal and conservative ideas, and that is in itself inherently moderism. Absolutely. <laughs> but the thing is, is here's the thing. Uh -huh. Ultimately, you I have a combination of of right and left ideas, but the question is, it, it, it well, what comes it down to is to where you lean is how important is one political issue over another to you and who which 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 like are you would voting for a democrat be more likely to get that in like a democratic party member get like a, a like to do that or would voting for a republican party member be more likely to get that so like yes you're right that is that it is like true that people have left or right views, but that doesn't mean they're moderate. It, it can mean it, like if they have e like if they have equally an equal amount of right wing and left wing views. Cool. Most people will have some views. Some some issues will be far more important than others. In how in the things that in the way that they lean or the way that they vote, there are so the amount of politician of of, of people who voted for the Republican Party to overturn Roe v. Wade, even though a lot of these people 
live or like have to go to the co-op for the farming. They are union nobody, members. Nobody all voted the people for that because it was the Supreme Court. Nobody votes to put people on the Supreme Court aside no. from Congress. Bri- Bri- Brian, obviously, the, but they the, the the this has been like I'm going to overturn Roe v. Wade has been the has been the the drum that has been beat by the Republican Party for years to get right to get evangelicals and religious people on their side they, they're they're the, like single issue voters are but time out how many how many polls are done that even show that Repu- uh conservatives themselves don't even want full uh, uh no abortion for women even even among i'm saying even among personally identified conservatives abortion is a uh what's it called tricky issue because nobody it seems to be an issue that Republicans could lose over in November. What I'm saying is, it's, it, if they do lose, it'll that'll be a huge chunk of why. And, and what I'm saying is, the 30 percent of people in this country who, right now, today on June 27th, the day of the first debate, are still up in the air about voting Democrat or Republican in any election happening this november because it's not only about the president it's about local fucking politics and state level politics as well uh the thing that i'm saying is that 30 percent has to at least be somewhat considered somewhat to be moderate because if they're looking at both parties and they're and they're looking at their own ideals and they're saying ah 30 percent of the country is saying ah. I don't really know who I'm going back this time. And I get it. You can, everybody can make tons of arguments for whichever side is better. And obviously I agree that Biden is the better of two evils out of those two idiots. But genuinely, the feeling of we should not be in this position itself should be a a, uh, litmus test for moderism in this country. Because I'm willing to bet like 90% of the fucking people who are even willing to vote for Biden and Trump both are feeling that way. (laughs) I would love to have you take a political comments test, like an actual one, like where you, where it's- I have told you, and I told you a million times. And guess where I land every single time. And I know you won't believe me, but it's dead in the middle. You're, you're, is it was it one of those things where it you add where it also asked you how strongly you believe those things? Yeah, like strongly agree, strongly disagree, uh, agree, agree, disagree, somewhat disagree, somewhat agree. Yes, like it baffles people, but I genuinely do believe in some Republican esque ideas more so in uh, 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 economy way more than socially i don't really agree with any social republican ideas then socially i'm very democratic and i believe very strongly in being able to do whatever the fuck you want to do i'm, cu- I'm, the- I'm curious now what are these republican economic ideals that you're of people? at a certain point there should be uh what's it called you know there shouldn't be any uh what do they call it uh despot that's not the right word uh no, no, no. Uh, in terms of economic ideas, not how I think it should be ran. Uh, I definitely agree with some embargoes. I mean, genuinely, we're never going to be able to compete with China with the way that they deal with electric cars in their country versus ours. So genuinely, that's the only way to compete. Very that's what I'm, Fair enough. That's okay. what I'm talking about in terms of conservative economic ideas. Give not me, really. Give in- me, give, give, well, here's the thing that like the, the, it, it, you must have been asked a lot of different economic questions. So I, I, I give me another because you know if if, if, if that political compass set the test had you squarely as a moderate on I like you can't, let let play it all out dead ass. Well, I thought we weren't going to do uh, politics for this hour because we were focusing on the debate, but no you, problem. You, you I also that, strongly, yeah, please, please, I I'll strongly believe. Report. Now, obviously, I disagree with the practice of it, but I strongly believe in this is an economy. So let's just take that out for a second republican idea right i strongly believe in the death penalty for people who do heinous as fuck crimes now obviously there are examples where people who are innocent get put to the chair or the electric or whatever or gas chamber i definitely am not letting any discredit to that the way that we do it keeping them alive for 20 30 plus years 
wasting our tax money on it makes no sense to me. I won't disagree with that point at all. I am saying in a perfect world, in my fucked up head, I think death penalty for people who have committed horrible, heinous, physical acts of crime should be put to death. Agreed. But I think the only reason I say we should outlaw it in this country is because I have no fucking faith in the, in the, in the justice system. To not this is my same argument people. against communism. Inherently, human beings cannot handle that responsibility. Human beings are not trustworthy. Therefore, I don't believe that anybody should say to anybody else that you are put to death unless they have concrete evidence, but then staying alive for 20, 30 years is insane. Same thing with believing that a human being at the top of any economic system would then say, hey, you know what? Those people also deserve equal, if not more. I genuinely don't believe that's a thing that human beings have the capacity to Give me do. another economic thing. Uh, another economic thing in terms of, well, in terms of new industry, I definitely believe that there should be, uh, you know, what we saw with Tesla in the beginning. And we should have way more, uh, what's it called? We should give way more grants and shit like that to burgeoning businesses. And I know you're going to say Agreed. that's not really that's not really a political uh, basis, uh, political ideology base. But I I would make the argument that that is way more Republican esque than it is Democratic esque. No, I mean, it, like to remember, it's it, so we're also like, talking about original conservatism. So yes. <laughs> Well, uh, so not not this bumblefuck conservativeness that we have going on in the country and the rest of the world, because the world is also being conserved by conservative movements. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Because I know a lot. I I, I know this. So I want to see what if, if, if the is is would a 90 percent corporate tax rate be a good or a bad one in the American I, within the American within the way the American tax code is currently structured? I believe genuinely if anybody tried putting forth Democrat, uh, Republican, uh, independent, who the fuck ever, if anybody tried to put up a 90% uh, tax rate, Corporate nobody tax would rate. support it. Nobody would support it, first and foremost. Now, not I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not asking whether or not people would support it. I'm It'd saying... Be a great do you Without think it would a doubt, be a, good it would or a, bad be a great idea because then we would not see the disparaging amounts of money from CEO and upper management profits compared nope. to lower management. No, no, no. no. You, here's the thing: you misunderstand. People misunderstand. Not you, but people in general. When you have a corporate tax rate that's ninety percent, the only people that, in theory, could get even paid that the, the the only people that will get paid, you don't have to change a single thing. That is being the salary of like thinking with the salary of all of the people in the C-suite. The only people who get paid less with a 90% tax rate is the shareholder class. And then you might say, but Evan, what about 401ks? When, when you have a 90% tax rate, you get pensions again. Pensions being part of, of the three of the three-legged stool of retirement. That 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 is social security, four hundred one k's, and pensions. Let me ask this question: Would this be a conservative idea if the government, as a nameless entity, goes to all profitable companies, uh, let's say making over like a billion dollars in profit every year, and says, "Hey, we are proposing a ninety percent tax cut to every profitable business over a billion dollars yearly in uh, profit revenue, whatever the case may be." However, you say that. Uh, but if you take that billion dollars and reinvest it not into the company, but into the pockets of your employees, hey, you ain't got to worry about taxes. Or we'll, do, we'll go back to the original tax plan that we always had. I, that is what, that's what I'm saying when I say conservative economic policy. Because sometimes it shouldn't be as that simple is, that, as that would be a liberal policy, economic policy. And why do I say it's a liberal economic policy? Because you can make an argument for either one. No, no, no. I'm no. I'm, I'm no. I'm doubling down on this. Like it, it could. It, that I will double down and say no, it is also a conservative I, movement. It, it's <laughs> not. Let me explain why. The reason why yeah. it's not is because conservative economics want as little tax as possible. Yes, and you would receive. And as little tax and, as possible and, if following this specific thing. 
and specifically, they they would it, they wouldn't conservative the 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 the, and the way conservative economic principle works is they don't actually care about wages. They care about making it so make they what they what the conservative economic policy would be if they wanted to give wages is they would want to cut taxes further and give government money to companies whenever if they were say they're going to look with Amazon what Amazon did trying to make the second headquarters. The reason I say this no, is they inherently I, hold on, pause. Inherently no. Because the only reason why Republicans rely so much on this idea of pulling yourself by the bootstraps is because they still believe in a day and age that doesn't exist anymore or where your wages, where your, no, 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 it did at a certain point, where your wages cover everything in in terms of your life in yeah, terms yeah, of yeah that, that 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 time period was like the 1950s or 60s which also had when you had the 90 percent tax rate that was a- even 70s and 80s for uh everybody but his uh minority america so yeah. that's what i'm saying that's why well the thing is that's that why i think the ideal tend- that idealization of things is ultimately the product of left like left-wing economic policy you don't get i that. see what you're saying you but don't get you don't get you don't get a that part of by a part taxes. of conservative a, a part of the conservative movement is believing in the fact that there are wages that are uh supporting people through whatever paying for their house paying for the food whatever the case Obviously, me and you both agree that without democratic social programs, that that shit would not exist. This is why I say that without a doubt, without the, uh, you know, other hand washing the other hand, that nothing would actually get done in this country. That's why I'm not saying I am 100 percent Republican. That's why I'm not saying I believe wholeheartedly in conservatism. I'm just saying I'm a moderate because I I obviously I'm I'm harping on what you said. Like, would that be a, a conservative? Like, of like, of like, thing. It's not in the in the reason in which I never got to explain because was the reason why I said it's a liberal thing is because what a liberal will do is the all the good the thing you should do is yes have a high tax rate on corporations. That's what you should do. That is the solution to a lot of the fucking problems. That would make it. So, that would mean that that would make businesses grow because they would be forced to spend more of their their earnings back into the business that would make ten- tensions come back so retiring retirement becomes feasible again it would also make it so you know wages were higher so people have a higher quality of living that boosts the economy it's a bottom up whenever like there's a reason like 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 with the pandemic when you send out all those checks it saved the fucking economy because when you support the economy from the bottom up not the top down you know you get economic growth yada 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 and the reason why I say it's a liberal yeah, but it's conservative. Position, and it's conservative I- inherently because it's dealing with the profits of a company. It's not, and it's dealing with tax hikes versus tax cuts. It is a liberal position. When I say liberal, I'm talking about right. To stop, stop when you hear liberal. Stop thinking like fucking like a like 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 AOC all that bull. Like stop it. I'm talk when I say liberal. I'm talking about right of radical. The radical position is this is what will make things better. The liberal position here is we we under we, we want these companies to do it of their own volition because we don't want to take the full step. That is the well, big then, criticism I well, have. Well, then we could sit them. here. Hold on. Then we could sit here and argue about every single right or left policy. Hold on. Wait. Yeah. Don't say anything yet. Policy in America and how it compares to the grander scale of uh political ideology and that whole thing where it fits on the line there but nobody is doing that because genuinely liberalism original liberalism and original conservatism let's not even talk about the two extremes on both ends are barely existed let alone not only in this country but in the world everything now is new age politics there is not a country in this world that runs off of old age political ideology which well, is the well, also old age political, political ideology true. i mean political ideologies are always changing so like the idea of holding on to like old like this is one of my biggest criticisms of some aspects of the left is 
they will always like they'll quote people like Marx and Engels and shit like and like like Foucault and all that bullshit like fucking gospel like I don't care I don't give a shit about the political ideologies of the past all I know is, is that if we want to fix our economy and make it less shit you tax you have you tax you tax companies at a, a fuck off amount. At, at the expense of at the expense of the like shareholder class, which are already like which is already the one one percent of one percent anyways, because one percent of Americans own seventy percent of all stock or of stocks in, in existence. So you, you 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 make more tax brackets past three hundred and thirty six thousand dollars. And I and, definitely and, agree with that. And, I, and, see. And, and and then you just do a flat tax of like ten to fifteen percent for anybody earning more than. I don't know, two million dollars a year. And then you, you just you 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 you, you use the tech you use taxation as a way to prevent people, individuals, or small groups of individuals for of you of pulling their money or using their money to act, to cause political change that affects the country negatively. Like, well, I also want to say the uh, discrepancy between what's allowed for the right and what's allowed for the left is continuously insane to me yeah the, i the don't right, the right is able to do them like the right is able to do like wild heinous shit that even if, if a left-wing person even in a fraction of what the, of the shit they do like it would be like round the clock news it's, it's insane double standard i'm just is, it's crazy I'm just genuinely scared about the prospect in the future of not having a second party to really pull the Democrats back. Because I'm not saying now, now they're okay. You know, nothing monumental is going on on the Democratic side. It's definitely all on Republicanism. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying that conservative ideals do have some good points when you stay away from society and social issues, right? Yeah, can I be honest with you, bro? Uh -huh. There's not like what would end up happening is is that one of two things would happen. One, uh, the the left the the center the the left wing elements would would come out into their own party, and they and it, you would have a new conservative leading party, which would have been the original like the centrist moderate Democrats versus um, that. And, or what ends up at what was more likely to happen. Is the primary become the becomes the new general? Uh, but uh, no, which would be I don't. Bad, with, 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 uh, which would I be think bad you're because wrong of how, because how the Democratic Party structures their primaries. That that would. But be also, the thing. also, you and me both saw this happen in 2016 to Bernie. I do not agree with what you're saying. I think genuinely. If there is anybody to ever stir the pot, it's only going to be through the Republican Party, and that sucks because what, you, what do you can't mean stir the pot. What I mean is to have a Bernie Sanders s character. What I mean is to have like a hold on, have a Trump s character who bear with me, not his ideas, not his rhetoric, not his feelings, not his craziness, but his ability to actually verbally say it, not actually do it, but to shake shit up, to change the party around a little bit so everybody isn't all drinking the Kool-Aid. And I think that's what's going on currently with the Democrats. They're all drinking this fucking Kool-Aid. Like, genuinely, you want me to believe that every Democrat believes Biden was the one and only true pick to beat fucking Trump. I get that he's been the only Democrat to do it so far, but he's been the only one with a real fucking shot because the other one was hated by everybody. So Who's the other one? Hillary Clinton. So what are we talking about? Yeah, here? Hillary Clinton was a raging bitch. She, she, she I hate nobody Hillary liked her. She, she nobody she, liked her. She, she still opens her fucking mouth and like she, like she endorses. And it's the worst thing for Democrats. It's the worst fucking thing ever. They should throw her into a goddamn dungeon and never let her out. <laughs> no, absolutely, I agree. She's terrible. And here's the thing. And here, I here I think is the big difference. I think, and here's ultimately why. I guess, like, like here's the thing. A, a firebrand coming out of the left of out of the left would be very popular and would succeed. Bernie would have won if it wasn't for the nature of the Democratic Party's process, without a fucking doubt. But here's the thing: you also got to remember, Nina. And Turner, they did that shit to him again, 2020. I'm yep. sorry. Go ahead, Nina Turner. <laughs> Nina Turner. Uh, I don't know if you know who that is, but she's a uh, um she was she's a left she's a, 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 a um uh, justice Democrat type 
she's a um, she's progressive and she's really fucking smart. She's really fucking good. And she ran was running for Congress. The entire team. So like the two people running both knew the person whose seat she was going for had retired. Hmm. Not only did. Oh, I think I, I did hear about I, this. I, I, I think, people... I, think I, I think her opponent got, got damn it. near a billion dollars. Yeah. In support yeah, trying about like this. trying to do it. Like, because not only was the entirety of the Democratic Party donating money to Nina Turner's opponent in the in, in their primary, both Democrats by the way, but also her opponent also on the like got a got a obscene amount of money, like in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Republican Party. This is why I'm saying what I'm saying about uh, this is why I've always said what I said about Democrats. They don't deserve the cheerleaders. No, they don't. They yeah. don't. The biggest, my biggest criticism of the Democrats is, is that they view the left wing as a bigger threat than the right wing. Because they know that the ideas are more popular right now. They, they know that they, they I hope they, they changes. No, no. No, it's it's not that they th they, they they think they think that the Republicans like they, they, they because remember how I said like everything had shifted, the Democrats are closer in ideology, the moderate Dem Democrats are conservatives for most things. They are closer like I know, and because they are conservatives, <laughs> they are they are closer aligned with the ultra conservatives. In the Republican Party, than they are the the uh, radicals um, in in the, the Democrat Party, and right. and that's exactly why I say that I don't blindly support Democrats just because Trump is a threat to democracy. Yeah, I think he genuinely is, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to support a either physically, mentally, or uh, physically or mentally weak man, and or a person who i genuinely don't don't i genuinely don't think that he has the capacity to run the country for four more fucking years until he's 85. well my my, my <laughs> thing is, my, my, my thing is is that like biden is a couple years younger than trump first of all no other it's, way other way okay and, se way. And, and secondly like i i'm i'm like you i don't support the democratic party like gung ho but Am I am I am I ever going to vote for a Republican again in my life? No, not while while they are like as far as like not while they are representing conservative values. Never, not never. What about and so let me so, ask and, this. and so if like you, when it comes to the general election, if you, you move for? if you move to a state where there was a Republican on uh, election who was genuinely against Trump, and you move, I don't know why you would do this. I don't think you ever would, but you move to a red state, you knew it was Republican versus Republican or Republican versus Democrat. And the de Democrat is talking mad, uh, what's it called, uh, 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 you know, Republican ass shit about tax taxes and whatever the fuck. You're genuinely saying that if the Republican had better talking points that you were aware of, you wouldn't. It doesn't matter the talking points. It matters what if this policy restrictions are. And here's the thing. Like, if there's a Democrat, like, the, like not in the history of never in the past decade has a, is a, has a Democrat been further right than the Republican in the general. Now, here's the thing. I'm just saying, if... Here, here's my thing. What I what what I would like 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 it's an it's an if that like hypo, in the hypothetical sure but my thing is is that it's a hypothetical that's not even worth engaging in necessarily because it's it's just it, it's it it's never yeah in but the are you not ever. worried at some point that maybe we're going down the same track that the older generations have and we see them being idiots about it now but. Wouldn't it be fair to say that at one point they had the same perspective as you in this very moment? That's like, what the fuck I'm trying to say. I mean, I mean, like all of the baby boomers that would have been, you know, left leftists now and right and like left wings now, like those people are either 
you know, either, well, either saying... or they, they were either killed, they were either killed back in the day, they or by either you know political like lunatics or more, more realistically by have by being poor, by being poor and not and like having and like having health issues. The people that like the and the, what the do you people the, the boomers that are around today are the yeah. ones that had the the, the the that were either that were primed in, in in such a way to um have a lot of money and own property and shit. The people that would like have my my political views, they didn't fucking make it. They got chewed up by the system. No, the you're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm saying your perspective on your political view right now and how you don't think it will ever change and how you don't think you'll ever vote re Republican the, in your life. The, the only, the Hold only, on. Go for it, go for it. Very quickly. <laughs> I'm saying, don't you see any parallels between that and the stinking thinking of older generations who currently are saying... I have only ever voted Republican in my life. I have only ever voted Democrat in my life. And then I also just want to throw in this monkey wrench. What about all the people that started off voting for Obama two terms and then ended up with Trump? That's what I'm saying. Well, the thing is, is, is that at the end of the day, the people like Trump, like, and Obama, um, uh, both played on very strong human emotions. Obama played on the feeling of hope for a better future and the front and he didn't fucking deliver on that. And, and so when Trump comes along and starts playing on, on people's economic fears and other fears, he did that, 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 like, that, that stems the brakes, you know? Bull, and it bull. says a lot about Biden's position right now and his condition more so than his position because he was his, he was Obama's right hand man as that shit was going on. The fact that he can't he truly. Drunk Uncle can, Joe. I'm saying the fact that he truly cannot tug on the heartstrings of people and make them passionate about this election is what is driving me up the wall and why I'm searching for an answer on why the Democrats have chosen this man to do it, who started off a lot like FDR, saying that he was going to be a one-term president. <laughs> so... And I hope we don't get fucking Nancy Reagan. I'm not trying to have Carmelo run shit from the fucking shadows or Jill Stein or whoever the fuck it is. Can I be honest with you? Um, Go ahead. If, if Kamala, I think that, or I think that, um, you know me, I'm objective, right? Like I look at this shit like through like like a, like like a no bullshit kind of way. The Carmelo stays on as his running mate. I don't understand that. I think. That I think that he, I think ultimately he did bring her on because for the cloud points, yeah, for for, he for wanted, the cloud, he wanted uh, he wanted a black like black woman, all that shit. Like, fuck. The problem is, is that Joe Biden's politics, like, let's like 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 if we break it down to brass tacks, ignore the fact that he's a billion years old. Who gives a shit? Ultimately, I don't care that a Biden is a billion years old. I care. About his policy prescriptions. I care if he dies in the White House or not. I care genuinely about that. Is that right. a fair thing to care about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a fair thing to care about. That doesn't life. mean I'm voting Trump. I'm just but, saying, like, but, but, genuinely. My, but my thing is, is that, like, ultimately, if he dies, he dies, so be it. I, like, if I look at his policy prescriptions, Kamala Harris's, like, let's look at this objective, right? Biden, while in office, has empowered the National Labor Relations Board, all the union shit. I'm not going to bore you with that. You already know how to feel about it. He has, um, he has forgiven a billion dollars of student loan debt so far. I think more than that. I think that was a thousand six months ago. He has uh, uh, added a pathway to citizenship and expanded the options for citizenship for um, uh, the spouses of, you know, with spouses of American citizens. So it's another thing, immigration. Uh that's a hard one for Democrats this fucking season. Yeah, but the thing is is, is that like uh oh fucking uh you know like I th we'll watch it here and after we're done this, but you know, I would love I can't wait to see a Biden I can't wait to see uh Trump try to like go after Biden on the border because Biden just continued his policies and double, tripled and quadrupled down on them. He has been Bitches at the border. I'm not happy with it, but my thing is that all of the economic stuff that he's done, then all of the relief, like for the lower, for like the lower class that he's done, 
like economically kind of has me overlooking like the immigration shit and don't tell anybody kind of like like my thing is is that ultimately domestic issues are the things that win elections biden you know has done a lot of really good shit for the mid lower and middle class so i don't i, I and also the polling that we have the poll the, the polling methods that we're currently using for political polling is notoriously bad and has been shown time and time again to not be representative whatsoever of like what ends up happening i remember when fucking trump won that that fucking poll was like he's never gonna win not even close ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yeah so like the polling the polling has like polling has on average showing like polling no matter who does it has a republican back you yeah know? but i'm i'm so, just gonna so, say so, every so, so i don't real think, quick Every base that the Democrats are usually relying on, Hispanics, young voters, college educated, how whatever you want to say, even though, yes, I'll agree, the polls are gravely mistaken, probably because it's voluntary, uh, you know, it requires a volunteer and that automatically fucks up statistics in any goddamn study you're doing. Um, I'm just saying he seems to be continuously unpopular to the people that he is uh pandering to and i think he needs to stop fucking pandering i think he needs to start bragging because i agree with you he's done so many genuinely good things for this country still i don't truthfully uh i'm not excited about him as a candidate but yes he's done he good is the most things. left-wing president in our lifetime but he's too fucking finicky he's too he's perceived to be too fragile and he's not doubling down when that's what people want to see of him he should be pandering to the people who are undecided not the people that are pretty much going to vote for him or are going to go to trump but those are the outliers of that uh that subgroup right I'm saying, why isn't he going after the 30% of people who genuinely are still confused? Even after Trump got fucking, uh, what's it called, accused of 34 felonies. Like, what are we discussing here? What are we talking about? I, th I think, and I, I, and I hope last... tonight that yeah. we see uh, in this debate, I hope we see somebody... Uh, I'm saying regarding Biden, I hope we see somebody that was adjacent to his State of the Union address, because that was an example of somebody who was strong enough to run a fucking country. I, yeah. He is not dealing with these uh, things head on. And I, that shows I, a lot of I hope fear. I, I hope Biden had a big meal for lunch, took a long fucking nap, and then woke got up that a great hours. drug cocktail, whatever the fuck they pumped into him. <laughs> yeah. So I think the last thing I'll say before we start wrapping up tonight's episode and then yeah go take our quick sabbatical real quick to go take care of bodily needs before we do this fucking run, run back um of a debate um is i think and this is only the last thing i'll say on the poll the only thing that i think i think the only thing just for my analysis that will cause biden to lose the election this november will be lack of trust. i think ultimately the fact that you know still that that americans don't give a shit about um you know like nobody who who nobody who voted for uh biden last time is going to vote for trump this time so the only so i so i think the only reason why uh biden would lose this election it would basically be a, a larger on a larger scale like of the of the uh new york 16 uh uh a uh, uh, race between latimer and bolt and bowman where bowman lost by I think by I think of five thousand votes, but the amount of people who voted in that election was half of the amount of people who voted in the in, in the previous election. That, that that's exactly in. what that's exactly what happened in the twenty sixteen general election for the presidency. I'm when just, Democrats don't show up, Republicans win. Republic, and what I'm Demo saying Democrats is, have the numbers. Republicans and don't. what I'm what I'm saying is. I hope that Biden has put enough faith in people to make them come out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I hope I I hope so. I think I think the word I I I I tell people like, hey, listen, I understand you're not going to vote for Biden, and you can't because of because of uh, genocide in Palestine going on. But if, but still go out and vote. Just it, just do a write in, just write in like your mom's name or something. 
for the presidency. Make sure you still need to vote down ballot because that's also important. Like that's the thing I stress at this point. Like I can't. I'm not going to advocate for Biden to, for people who just don't want to fucking hear that. But I am going to advocate for still showing up on voting day because if you don't show up on voting, because like here's the thing. Like, worst case scenario, Biden loses because nobody fucking votes for it, but enough people still showed up on fucking, like, voting day to, like, put, I don't know, Democrats in every other aspect of government so they can just immediately, like, say, pa like, pass a fucking law that allows Congress to fucking, like, sanction the, the fucking president when the, he starts actively breaking the rules of the Constitution and shit. You'll probably hate me for this, but genuinely, if you live in a uh usually red or blue state ah uh, do you really have to because like my thing is the, i'm in la there so is the, no way you, you vote in the primary no way the purpose <laughs> of the pro like listen general doesn't like that's why like when i say like it's the primary that matters not. unless you care about local election if you care about local election vote in every single election every single two years but if you're only really worried about the president ever and you live you know, consistently in a red or blue state, I don't make the argument that you have to vote so irregardless I, of the I, I, I get where you're coming from with that. I fundamentally disagree simply because if you have enough people that don't, if, if enough people think like that, you know, you, then I'll say this, change. vote only if you think the person you're voting for is actually eligible for that position. How about that? I would say vote period because the amount of fucking people who have fought and died. So, you know, people you have the ability. I'm sorry, to that doesn't them. matter. In terms of having, when the election is constantly two sides of the same evil coin, just one of them is slightly less evil than the other, voting no longer has the, patriot, the patriotism. Uh, I want to be, be, be very clear. The, the 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 Biden is shit. He's not evil. He's shit. I'm standing by what I said, though. If, I know, I know. I'm just saying what you what you said was wrong. So, but if you have the perception that they're both two sides of the same bullshit coin, then you should vote for neither one. And that is the perception of, and that perception is a big reason why people like why left wing people aren't able to fucking mobilize in this country. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been the rundown episode 17, I think this is. Uh, yes, I think so. Don't quote me on that. Um, if you want to, if you want to uh, 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 support the show, you, if you want to hang out with me and Brian and stuff, you can do it so by joining our Discord at, at, dis, at himedia.gg slash Discord or hit the jo or join community link in the description. Uh, you can uh, find Brian at on YouTube at no dot to Brian all lowercase, and you can find me well in my YouTube channel, which is how you're probably watching this. I, I mean, there's podcast versions of this wherever you find your podcasts, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Brian's attractive, and I put production <laughs> effort into this, so you might as well just watch it on YouTube. This is also episode seventeen. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching. We appreciate you, your time, and your viewership. Give me money at himedia.gg slash tip, and we will see you guys next time.